This is your Kick-Ass Life Podcast, episode number 125, with guest Sally Hope. This is the Your Kick-Ass Life Podcast with Andrea Owen, a no BS guide to self-help and badassery. Because ladies, let's face it, life's too short for it to not kick ass. And here's your host, the girl who serves it up straight with a side of crazy, Andrea Owen. Hey there, ass kickers. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. As always, I am so thankful that you are here and spending some time with me today. It is a rebroadcast with one of my favorite guests, Sally Hope. And as many of you know, my father passed away last month in October, and I'm taking a little break for a few weeks and re-airing some archived episodes. And I just want to say thank you so very, very much for your patience during this time as I take this little break and get my bearings back and get caught up in writing my book. I'm writing my second book, and I have a deadline coming up. I'm about a month behind on my word count, so I'm kind of coming back up for air. So I really appreciate your patience around the podcast. So I have two quick announcements for you. One is just super quick. The first one is is that there's a brand new episode coming out next week. So look forward to that. I know I am looking forward to giving it out to you. And the second announcement is that also next week, I'm opening registration for my signature online program – early. It doesn't start until January. We start in the new year. But what I am going to do for just podcast listeners only, I am offering for 10 people only a $200 discount and an extended payment plan. So I'm teaching the masterclass and it's my signature program. I'm not going to get into all of the details because you can go and read about it at Kickass Masterclass. Dot com. That kind of rhymes, doesn't it? Yeah, you can go over there and check everything out, kickassmasterclass.com. You can even sign up for early notification on that page. And in a nutshell, it's an eight-week online program guided personally by moi, where we go through all of the tools you need to learn and put into practice to live your life from a place of courage and confidence instead of fear and holding yourself back. Again, you can go to that page and read about the testimonials from women that took it last year that loved it. And again, this will only be announced on next week's podcast, the link that you need to go to, to be able to grab one of those 10 spots. And that episode comes out on November 16th. And also, if you do sign up on that page for early notification, you will get an email. But some people don't get my emails. It kind of goes to your spam sometimes or goes to your promotions folder or whatever. So if you are sure that you want in, if you've been waiting since last year to take it and you know that you want one of those 10 spots at that $200 discount along with the extended payment plan, then I would mark your calendar for November 16th because that's when open registration registration happens. And once those 10 spots are taken, they are taken. You can still sign up, but the discount is only for those 10 people. So that's all the announcements I have for you. Thanks for listening. And without further ado, here is Sally Hope. Hey guys, welcome ass kickers. We are here with Sally Hope. Say hi to everybody, Sally. Hello, everybody. And today we're going to talk about, it's kind of like a mishmash of topics. I really wanted to cover the whole gamut of what you are amazing at, Sally, which is so many things. So it's hard to pick. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You know, it is kind of funny, like those questions like, oh, you know, what is your, what do you like to do or what are your hobbies? And I'm like, oh my gosh, mine are all over the map. You're not going to understand me from that question. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think anyone too, like in the self-help world, and I work with a lot of new coaches too. And part of it is, you know, finding your niche and what exactly do you help people with? And people are like, I help people with everything. I like to talk about everything, but it sort of all encompasses just being awesome. That's what your brand is. And that's what it sounds like Wild Heart Revolution is. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm sure we'll get more into it, but it does cover a lot of ground and it's not surprising because that's how I am too. Very multifaceted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So 
you know, I spent some time on your blog and I, every single post I was like, oh my gosh, I want to talk about that. Oh my gosh, I want to talk about that. So, but the first one I wanted to talk about is the reason I picked it is because I feel like a lot of, of my listeners and I'm sure yours as well have, have trouble doing this about trying to please everyone and being a people pleaser. And, and it was the one that stood out for me was your blog post entitled a battle cry for peaches everywhere. If you guys have never heard that sort of statement. It's like a meme that's been floating around on Instagram and Facebook. And who's the person that said that? Wasn't it Dita Von? It's Dita Von Tees. And it's one of my favorite quotes. It comes up very often for me and my clients. Yeah. And it says, you could be the most beautiful, juiciest, ripest peach in the world. And there will be someone out there that hates peaches. Yes, that's right. (laughs) Poor peaches. (laughs) Poor peaches. Yeah. The the blog post is you're talking about, you know, trying to please everyone and how to stop doing this. So can you just tell us like, what's the gist of the post and how you've learned to do this and also how you teach your people how to do this to stop caring so much if other people like us or not? Yeah. So I'm really glad you picked this one because it's actually a topic that's near and dear to my heart. That quote, you're right. It's an amazing quote. The idea is that it doesn't really matter what we do. We can be the most brilliant, the prettiest, the coolest, the nicest, the smartest person on the planet. And there's still going to be somebody that doesn't like us. And I find that one of the biggest things that gets in the way of people living their lives the way they really want to live it is their trying to live within a, like kind of like a made up system of what other people are going to accept. So whether that be, you know, I even remember like back in high school, you know, when all my friends were picking colleges and picking majors and it was like, you know, I should do business because my parents, you know, think that's a better option when really they want to do art. Or, you know, when maybe you're at a job you don't like and what you'd really like to do is start a cupcake business, but you don't want to do that because your friends think that's stupid or you're, you know, everybody tells you it's not a good idea. And so we get into these habits of making our decisions based on what we think other people will approve of or what we think is acceptable, whether that be in a society or friend group or family. A family has a ton to do with it. But what we end up doing is living a life that's somebody else's. Mm -hmm. And then we wonder why we're not fulfilled. You know, like I hate my job. I hate my relationship. I'm not happy where I'm at. All I want to do is be a traveling gypsy around the world. (laughs) Do that because that's ridiculous. And what about my 401k says my mom and dad, Mm -hmm. you know, like, so I find it to be a very damaging thing to do to try to please everybody. And not only is it damaging, but it's actually a hundred percent impossible. Like there is no situation, no decision, nothing we can do that is going to make everyone happy. There's always going to be somebody who doesn't agree with it, whether that's, you know, like we said, family, friends, whatever. And so to try to cater to, you know, the peach haters to try to get them to love peaches, it's a losing battle. And so not only are you living your life unfulfilled, not doing the things you love doing, but you're actually also trying to please people that will never be pleased. And that life sounds pretty not fun to me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> to me too. That's very true. And I think that you're right. It stems even way back when we're in high school. And I think too, you know, for not that we do this as coaches, but I think it, it's important to point out that, you know, cause I have, I have two small children, six and four, and everybody always said like, well, you know, when you have kids, you'll notice that they really just want to please you like their parents. And they're always, they're looking for validation and acceptance. I think it's just biologically, I think that it's just a safety thing that children do. And I do notice that that's what my kids do. And so that's why praise works so well. And I'm so proud of you. And you know, you did so well at soccer, you know, your, your reading is so great. But then I think what's interesting is that like when we become adolescents and teenagers and start to grow up and become adults, no one, no one ever told me that, (laughs) that it was up to me to be okay with myself and like myself and not have to please everyone. Like they really should teach this that in high school. Absolutely. I mean, I think, I think so much should be taught in high school, like life skills, 101, you know what I mean? How to all of this stuff, how to love and accept yourself, how to know yourself. Because I think actually that's at the root of trying to please other people is when we don't really know what we want or connect to who we truly are. It's a lot easier to be like, well, you know, yeah, I'm a business major. That's like what, that's what I want, you know, when really Mm -hmm. it isn't, but you don't know that. So 
that's actually how I tried to get my clients to move through this because the truth of the matter is it hurts when people don't like us. Yeah. Like no matter who you are, mm-hmm. no matter how confident you are, no matter how evolved you are, you still want to be loved and accepted. Like you said, like your kids, you want somebody to say, Hey, good job. Nice breathing. Good mm-hmm. job. <laughs> <You know? laughs> This is, like a joke like with, this is a joke with my family. You know, my mom was very much into praise and, you know, positive reinforcement for basically doing nothing other than being alive, uh-huh. you know? Uh-huh. And that's the joke, you know, good breathing, Sally, you know, you're doing a great job and which is kind of segue there. But yeah, so if we're not connected to who we truly are and have that self-love and have that experience of, wait a sec, this doesn't feel quite right to me then it's harder to get there. So that's kind of how I approach it is helping people get very clear and connected to what it is they actually really want. And then you move through the like, okay, the fears and the gremlins of, you know, the voices telling you it's a stupid idea to open up a hat store or something Mm -hmm. like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like, there's a tool that, that I actually wrote about in my book and I, I heard it from Martha Beck a long, long time ago. And she talks about the rule of thirds And this totally changed my life. So, and I I know I've said it on the podcast before, but people always give me feedback that they love it. So I'm going to repeat it again. It's it's the rule of thirds looks like this. So there's going to be a third of the population that really, they just don't like you. And it's probably nothing personal. They're just, you know, they don't like your message. They don't like your hair. Like, I don't know. They just don't like you. And then there's a third of the population that are kind of indifferent and they, they might, or they might not. They really just don't care either way. They have no opinion. And then there's a third of the people that really do like you. They stand behind you. They love all your stuff. They like who you are, everything. So the reason this shifted for me was especially in business, because I was spending so much time trying to change the minds of that first two thirds of people, the people that didn't like me and the people that were indifferent when really all your focus and energy should be on that one third of people that already do like you. And you know, even if you're not an entrepreneur, nurturing those relationships, you know, making them better, figuring out how to communicate better, being proactive in that relationship. So that was a game changer for me. I hope that's helpful for all y'all listening. Yeah, I love that. I have a similar one that is just slightly different. And it also really helps me. So it's from Joel Austin. And it says 25% of the people you meet won't like you and never will. 25% won't like you, but could be persuaded. 25% will like you, but could be persuaded to not. And 25% will like you and stand by you no matter what. Mm -hmm. So it's the same idea of what you're saying is if we keep talking to the 25% that will not ever like us, it's just, it's a waste of time. So I totally am agreement. I love the rule of thirds. I'm going to remember that. Yeah. And I, I had heard that one before. I didn't know who said it. And I'm such a big fan of Joel Austin too. I love his stuff. He's a great podcast, by the way, you guys, if you're on iTunes, check it out. All right. So I also loved your blog post. Another one of my favorites is titled why people go looking for their purpose and never find it. I see this all the time, especially with women put so much pressure on themselves. Like I have to find my purpose. And I, that's what I, and a lot of people come to coaching for that. I'm not saying it's necessarily a bad thing to find your purpose, but I just feel like we put so much pressure on ourselves. And what I like to tell people, uh, just throw something out there before I hand it over to you. I like to tell people, what if your purpose is the journey? Like, what if that's your entire purpose is this journey of self-development and personal growth and learning to be the best possible person that you can. Maybe yours isn't going to Uganda to save the rhinos or, you know, opening up an orphanage or, you know what I mean? Like, I think people feel like it has to be this tangible thing that's measurable. And, and I just feel like, what if that's not it? I just don't feel like that's for everybody. What do you say about all that? I agree with you 100%. And I think that the search, and I'm doing little air quotes while I say that, I think the search for purpose is like not the point Mm -hmm. (laughs) at all. What I find a lot of times is it happens a lot with entrepreneurs too. Like, you know, I have all these business ideas and I don't know which one to choose. And it's like, you know, they're all coming to it from a place of intellect, like brain. I'm trying to think about what would make the most sense. Or I'm going to take, you know, all these courses to figure out what my purpose is. I'm going to do worksheets because I don't know who I am and I need to figure it out like now because, Mm -hmm. you know, I need to create something like yesterday. And there's actually an energy I find around that kind of thing that gets us further and further away from whatever we're meant to be doing. I find the whole find your life purpose idea really stressful. 
because who knows what their life purpose is? Like how, you know, a hundred percent of life is unknown. We really don't know what is going to happen and what's the right move. You know, anybody who's in any transition knows this feeling. Like, I don't know where to go. Mm -hmm. I don't know what step to take. I don't know the right choice to make. And the more we feel like we need to have a really solid grasp on the purpose, I think it's harder to actually find it. And that's why the title is, you know, when you go looking for it, you won't find it. Yeah. However, I do feel that there are some internal things that we're meant to do. And like you said, you know, not everybody is meant to have an orphanage in Uganda. Mm -hmm. Not everybody is meant to write a book. Not everybody is meant to be, you know, the next personal development superstar. Sometimes your purpose might look like I'm here to love my kids the best I can possibly love them. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I'm here to, you know, to learn what compassion is. And I love your take on that is, you know, what if your purpose is the journey? I mean, man, talk about taking the pressure off. Jeez, that's yeah. cool. <laughs> well, and I, I feel like, especially people that have, that have jumped into their personal development journey. Like I want to tell you guys, like, even if you're listening to this podcast, like clearly you have some value around self-help and personal growth. You have a leg up on most of the population. <laughs> And by leg up, I mean, you're, you're doing more for yourself internally, for your spirit, for your soul, for your legacy. And that's a big part of it because, you know, it's called personal development, but the ripple effect that you're having that you probably will never know is beyond measurable. And, you know, it's things like, I feel like even if I just taught my kids like simple things about life. Like we were just talking about like the things that I wish that I would have learned in high school. Even if I just left them with those lessons, I feel like that's my life purpose and my job here on earth is done. Like, so what if you listening, like, what if that was it? What if all the things that you wish that you would have learned that maybe that you learned the hard way. And then believe me, like your kids probably aren't going to take your lessons and live them, but, the, <laughs> but at least having those lessons, I think that that's invaluable. Absolutely. I yeah. totally agree. Life purpose, life schmerpus. So I will say though, that because even saying this and even talking about it and even agreeing with you and myself, <laughs> sometimes I still get caught in the trap too of like, okay, you know, what am I supposed to do? Like, what am I meant to do here? And what's the purpose? You know, what, what's the point of all of this? So one thing I will offer that gives me some solace. And I know some of my clients too, is there is usually something that's inside us that has always been there that feels like home or feels very comfortable. So the post that Andrea is talking about, it was from an interview I did with this woman who makes hats. She knits hats and gives them away for free. Mm -hmm. And her whole point is to make people warm. You know, that's, I mean, it's simply to make people warm. And I was asking her a lot of questions. How did, how did you discover this? You know, how did you get to, you know, it's such an interesting thing. I'm going to knit hats and give them away. That's my life purpose, you know, and we giggled about how silly quote unquote that sounded, but you know, it was much deeper than that. And for her, you know, she said it had always been there, that desire to help people for free. And, you know, she pushed it away and pushed it away. And when she started knitting, she thought, Oh, this is so silly. You know, like who does this? Like who gives away hats for free and makes that their life purpose? That seems like such a silly thing to do. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> well, but exactly. And that's exactly the point is that oftentimes the things that we think are so silly, but that are so natural to us, we push them away as though they're not good enough. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, is that when anything comes from the heart and the spirit and the soul in that way, when you're just like, I don't know why I feel called to do this. I just do. Those to me are the closest you can get to a life purpose is yeah. not pushing away those voices that say, Hey, make hats and give them away you know, and try not to feel silly about it. And when you do feel silly, you know, keep coming back to the hats because that is what you're meant to do. So, so even if your visions for yourself seem ridiculous or seem so far fetched or seem so silly or seem like they might not have an impact, just remember, you know, that one hat keeps somebody warm. And especially mm -hmm. in a place like Montana, I can tell you the hat she made for me made me really happy and it yeah. made me feel loved. And I couldn't believe that somebody wanted to give me something for free, somebody who didn't even know me. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, Andrea, like before we got on this call, I was asking her about her book and you were saying something similar, you know, getting emails from people who are like that one thing you said changed my life. Mm -hmm. You know, that one thing, it's a huge impact on somebody's life. So I always like to tell people, you know, no matter how silly or small it seems, that could very well be what you're here to do. Make hats, make cupcakes, write a book. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Yeah. Be the crossing guard at school. It could be anything. And I think that, you know, what you were describing there, I wanted to point out because it sounds like for that woman, you know, she kept hearing this voice, like when it's, it sounds primal and anytime that there is something inside of you that's tugging at you, that is your soul speaking. And that is so much bigger and more important than, you know, like what somebody says you should do or what you read in a magazine or what you think you should quote unquote do. And I I got that advice too when making a vision board. And so when you're looking through magazines or or you see something that doesn't make any sense to you, but it's like speaking to you somehow, then cut it out and put it on your vision board. I did that actually. This was years ago when I still lived in Southern California and I kept seeing pictures of land and like dirt roads and snow on trees. And I was like, no, like the logical part of me was like, (laughs) I'm not leaving Southern California. This is my home. This, you know, I'm a city girl and I didn't know what it meant. So I cut them out and put them on the vision board anyway. Cause that's what I had read. You know, like that's the true way of the universe speaking to you. It's primal. And so sure enough, and then it's funny because I put that vision board away and I didn't pull it out until after we moved. And A, I'll tell you what, we moved into a house that looked exactly like a house that I had got. So this vision board had been put away for two years. Two years. And yeah, there was a dog on there. We got a dog. And that was it. We ended up moving to Northern Utah into a more rural place, into a much slower way of living. And that's exactly what I wanted deep inside. I didn't want to live in the city anymore. So I think that's what that's speaking to. I mean, that's what that woman was feeling just to knit hats. And it speaks to, to being of service. I think we get so caught up in our own shit. One of my biggest pieces of advice is for, is for people to go and be of service. And then people say, well, I feel like I give to everybody anyway. Well, then... Be of service intentionally. Do you have, is there, does something speak inside of you for disabled people? Then go volunteer with the Special Olympics or the Disabled Athletes Foundation or at the hospital or something like that. These don't have to be your family members. These can be strangers. There's, I get a lot of people that come to me for coaching that one of their values is being of service and they're not honoring it. Mm. That could be your life purpose. Mm -hmm. Well, and also, you know, even bringing it down to earth a little bit too, like, and what that looks like is going to be specific to you. You know, it Mm -hmm. might be caring for your aging mother, you know, for the rest of her life, that might be it. So I think that like, I love the idea of taking the pressure off a little bit about having to search and find that energy and anxiety never gets us anywhere, nowhere, not for our businesses, not for life, not for finding love. Oh my God, I got to find him. What am I going to do? He's not coming. What's wrong with that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have to find it, find it, find it. You know, that doesn't bring it to us. So I believe that the answer is already there. We already have it. It's just that we're not really listening to it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I love that. And and also, you know, if you guys, if you guys haven't been to sallyhope.com yet, If you're driving, if you're in the car or something like that, don't go now. (laughs) But after the podcast, I would love for you to go over there and you'll see that, that Sally's message screams to not apologize for who you are. And, you know, your biggest self might mean having to leave some people behind. And I, I know that often people struggle with this as they evolve and grow, you know, about surrounding themselves with positive people and maybe limiting their time with people that don't foster that. So what advice do you have about this? So first of all, I find the company we keep extremely important to our well-being. I think the first time I discovered this was after high school, where in up to high school, you pretty much are friends with the people you've been friends with the whole time. And you don't have much choice, it seems. You know, you kind of are, you do, but you don't think so. You just kind of, I've always been friends with, you know, Mary. So I'm still friends with Mary, even though Mary is horrible, (laughs) you know? And I think that we forget that we have choice in everything in our lives, including the people that are around us. So I also find with a lot of my clients too, that the more connected they are to their most ideal life and their visions of who they want to be and who they actually truly are, a lot of their friends sort of the friendships seem less appealing. And that's 
causes a lot of pain. So my suggestion for that is to one, just be very aware of what it is you do want in your life and what you want to feel around the people you're around, the kind of conversations you want to be having, the kind of feeling you want to have after you leave hanging out with your friends. You know, do you want to feel like you were heard? Do you want to feel like you are lit up and inspired and excited? Do you want to feel, you know, like you just sat there and listened to somebody vent about the same thing 10 million times, which I know is like how it used to happen for me. Those are some of the types of friendships that I had to leave behind, especially when my job is to listen. Yeah. <laughs> so I would first just say, be very conscious and aware of the things that you actually are wanting and then start paying attention to what is in your life and how much that is or is not aligned to that vision. And when it comes time or if it comes time to reevaluate some of the friendships in your life, just be very honest about it mm-hmm. with yourself and you know, that's the best advice I can give is to value your time and your life and the types of relationships you want enough to say goodbye sometimes to the things that are not serving you. Yeah. I had a great example of this. I've told this story before. I had a friend that actually sort of dumped me. She was going through a time, I was going through a ton of drama and her mom got very ill and she really couldn't, she couldn't deal with my trauma anymore. And I, I don't blame her. But at the time she had to have that painful conversation with me and say like, look, I can't be your friend right now. I think we need a break. It's just, it's just not working out. <laughs> and it, it was, I'm not going to lie. It was painful at the time. And I took it very personally and was devastated. But in retrospect, you know, just, just a few months after that actually was when I really started to reevaluate my own life and started my own journey of self-help. But looking back on it, it was such a beautiful example. And it was really the first example I have ever had of a strong female standing up for herself and setting boundaries and just being, and like you just said, like being really honest, and I'm sure it was extremely hard for her to do and, and painful for her to do as well, but it was such a great example. And I'm so grateful that it happened to me because it, it, it did. It was a push for me to get my own shit together. And it was such a, she was such a great role model to do the same in my own life. Well, what a beautiful gift. I have a personal story on that. On the other side, it was not that long ago, actually. And it's a person who I adore and who is one of my very closest friends. And it was like a Friday and I was at the end of my week. And, you know, as a coach, you know, it's, it's what we do to listen and to process and to help somebody move through whatever they're going through. Well, also I'm a human being and okay. <laughs> sometimes I don't want to be at work all the time. And a friend of mine, you know, was talking, talking, talking for about an hour and a half. I was listening. And then I was, you know, finally got to the point where it was the same thing. She was saying the same thing, didn't want to hear anything else. And I got to the point where I'm like, Hey, honestly, I'm like, I can't, I can't mm-hmm. listen to this anymore. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, think uh-huh. I, said, I think I said, no, just no more. And I'm like, this is the end of my week. I love you. I know you have the answers. I cannot hear it anymore. And we both start cracking up, like <laughs> just laughing because for me to, to me to get to that point, it's hard for me, especially as somebody who is somebody who is of service and likes listening and is a good, you know, I consider mm-hmm. myself a good friend. But I had to stand up for myself because I was resenting her. And I was, I was Mm -hmm. like, I cannot wait to get out of this car, take me home. And that's not how I want to be around my friends. And I didn't want to take that with me and be like, well, you know, this person is just always going to do this to me. So I don't want to hang out with her anymore. So it was actually a really good lesson for us both for me to stand up. Like you said, to stand up for myself and say, Hey, you know what? I love you. And I cannot do this right now. It was very honest and, you know, it actually, it, it allowed us to have a deeper friendship because it's like, okay, that's the kind of fierce honesty that we're allowing into this relationship. And she could have said, you know what, that really hurt my feelings. And I could have said, you know, I understand that, you know, but like, at least we have the opportunity now to be really honest with one another, which I think is such a gift. That is. And she probably, I mean, I'm guessing she had no idea what she was doing. No, she totally said that. She's like, oh man, girl, I'm so sorry. You're right. You know, that's why we started laughing because she was like, oh my God, I'm being ridiculous, aren't I? And I was like, I just can't hear it anymore. Yeah. (laughs) I can't. No. And now the joke is no, just no. (laughs) No more. I wonder like how much, and think all you guys listening, think about how that would change in your own friendships. If that's all you did, if you just said, you know, I don't know. And the friend if you're listening and you have like a super fragile flower friend, 
say that fast. <laughs> Project Flower Friend. It, it may need to come out differently, but what if we did that? Oh my gosh. Like things would so change. I have actually had friends say that to me a long time ago. I was in an unhappy relationship and I would go around and around and complain about the same shit over and over again. And I had a couple of times, probably like at parties when we'd been drinking, you know, like a couple of friends would be like, I am so tired of hearing the same story over and over again. When are you going to do something about it? You know, and I would be like, <gasps> But they How were dare right. she? <laughs> How dare she tell me the truth? Right, exactly. How dare you speak the truth to me? <laughs> but I think what it does is it's a testament to both people because like when you can hear truth and not become really defensive about it, you know, it's hard in those moments where you're like, shit, like you're right. I'm being a pill, yeah. you know, or I'm taking advantage of your friendship or I'm not being a good friend in return. Like those things are not things that are easy to hear, but I view them as gifts because we can then take that and say, okay, she is right. You know, I'm complaining about the same shit. Do I want to do that? Do I want to make a change? Well, basically all it is is somebody holding up a mirror for you and saying, check yourself out. (laughs) (laughs) Check yourself out. Do you like what you see? Do you like what you see? Do you like what you're hearing? And a lot of times it we're not. And we think that complaining is just going to change something. If I just complain about it more. And my best friend, Amy has a great saying, and she says, quit complaining about shit. You refuse to take action on. That'll shut a lot of people up. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I want to ask you one more question before we have to wrap it up. Sure. And I know that Wild Heart Revolution and and you are, you're big on creating your own adventures. So where would someone start that is listening to this right now and saying like, I don't have a lot of time. I don't have a lot of money. You know, how am I supposed to be, how am I supposed to go on these great adventures? So what is your advice for that? Where would someone start? I love this question because great adventure can be anything from trying out a new coffee shop to taking a photography class that you've always imagined doing to traveling to India, you know, there's no one way to adventure and there's no one way to wild heart. The whole thing about wild heart in my mind is wild heart is creating your life the way you want to live it. And Mm -hmm. you don't need a lot of money to do that. You don't need a lot of time to do that. You can do it in the everyday things. So what I would suggest for somebody who wants to start doing more things that are connected to that feeling connected to who they want to be is start small. Start with one thing different this week. Do one thing different this week than you did last week. Try one new thing that you've been curious about. You know, check out maybe your local game night, you know, at the library. Or like I said, try a new coffee shop or whatever it is. Whatever is pulling you in a direction, follow it. And it doesn't have to be a grand gesture. There's a great idea. And I think it's Martha Hagen who has a freedom experiment, I think is what it's called. And her whole thing is trying things that are very small that can potentially make big changes in your life, you know? So if you have been wanting to try to play the guitar, you know, take your friend up on the offer or find a local guitar lesson, or maybe, you know, like your local community college has a free class or something like that. So I don't love the excuse of I don't have money or time to have the life I want, because really it can be as simple as buying organic this time at the grocery store. So what I would do and suggest is to really just kind of think of, think of some things that you're feeling called for, whether that be health or adventure or food or, you know, connection with other people and say, yes, say Mm -hmm. yes to an opportunity. And if you don't see one, create one. Yeah. I love that. I I think that when someone hears like, you know, an adventure, they think of like this cross country ride in an RV and, you know, visiting all 50 States or or something like grandiose. And you're right. It it doesn't have to be, it can be like right in your own backyard. And I think that a lot of people, I like that you mentioned too, about, you know, friendships and because I find that a lot of women come to me and we get to a certain age and we are missing out on those female connections. You know, we have maybe our coworkers and, and neighbors, but, but we might not have those like close female friendships. And that in and of itself can be an adventure. And people ask me all the time, like, well, how do I manifest these friends that I want? And, and, you know, we just talked about it recently about, I think that you said some really great things about like, how do you want to feel when you, when you have these conversations with your friends and 
and things like that. I always ask people too, like, how are you going to show up in the relationship? Commit to that first. So that could be your adventure. Think about the tribe that you want to, to have in your life and, you know, make it, make it like a summer project. I love that. <laughs> yeah. And I just want to share too, cause I have a lot of women talk to me about that too, about, man, I just don't have like close friends anymore. And the friends I did have aren't, you know, like we talked about before, aren't serving, yeah. you know, my best self anymore. So what do I do? And I always look at it like, we don't know, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. like there's no one answer to that. But what I like to do is cast a wide net. I like to try a lot of different things. So when I first moved to Montana, I didn't know anybody here. I had like maybe one friend who was like, not totally my peeps, you know, it was like a CrossFit guy. Like that's, uh-huh. that's not exactly like, you know, my spiritual sisterhood kind of family. Right. But I knew that connection and community was super important to me. And so what I ended up doing was like, I gave advice a little bit before is, you know, I said yes to almost everything. Mm-hmm. I, you know, joined like local, you know, outdoorsy meetup groups and, you know, went on some hikes with people. I started took archery classes. I, I went to like, you know, the bluegrass band that plays on Tuesday nights at a local bar here. I started dancing more. I did contra dancing. I did tango dancing. You know, I, I really said yes. And, you know, I checked out the local, you know, movie theater or, you know, getting involved is a really good way to meet people. And when you're doing things that are exciting to you, you're going to meet people with similar interests. Right. So your energy comes alive. It comes alive and, you know, you just never know who you're going to meet there. Like I started roller derby when I moved here. I ended up not loving roller derby itself, but I met one of my closest friends now in my life at roller derby. She just Mm -hmm. rolled on up to me and was like, Hey, what's your deal? You're new, you know? And we ended up becoming extremely good friends. So I find that usually it's the people that are like, I don't have connection. I don't have connection. You know, what am I supposed to do? It's also the people that aren't really putting themselves out there to try to find it. Yeah. I love that you said that. I did a whole month on this. I had a mastermind group, sort of like a membership thing for six months. And that was one of our topics for the entire month. And that's what I found, you know, the same thing. A lot of women were like really, really, truly wanted to do it and hungry for these female connections, but they were kind of feeling like it should fall into their lap organically. And I'm the first to admit I did the exact same thing when I moved to Utah. I, I had always lived in the same place my whole life. And I, I was truly under the assumption that I would just move there and I would make new friends and it would be super easy. And I remember crying on the phone with Amy and I'm like, I haven't met anybody and nobody, nobody likes me like poor, 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 sad trombone, clown face, Andrea. So, but the thing was, is like, I was not being proactive at all. I had cast no net, not just a wide, no wide net, like, <laughs> cast any net. So when I was coaching these women, I was like, okay, take it from experience. Like you have got to be proactive, like go to meetup.com, look on Twitter for people in your area with similar hashtags that you like join a knitting company or a knitting group. If that's what you like a book club, like, and I love that you said that, like, say yes to everything that you can until you find your people. Absolutely. Absolutely. It brings it back really quick to what you said in the beginning, which is Uh (laughs) self-responsibility. I find that like so many people forget that we are in charge of our lives. Like we have choice. Mm -hmm. We can create what we want to create. If you want friends, go find friends. It's you're not a victim. Yeah. Cause we don't, we're not like it was before, like where we're in school and we're surrounded by hundreds of other females that (laughs) that we can choose from. This is we're grownups and it's different now. So Yeah. Be proactive. I absolutely love that. And I absolutely love you. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. I enjoyed this so much. Thank you so much for having me and for all you guys listening. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah. Well, tell everybody where they can find you and what you have going on. Yeah. So you can find me at sallyhope.com. I'm also all over social media. I love communicating on Facebook and Instagram and all that good stuff. Right now, what I have going on is the Wild Heart Revolution, which is a private coaching slash lifestyle tribe. My whole idea behind it is everything we're talking about today, which is connection with people that are like us who have the same standard of quality of life that we have for people who want to live in the way that they know they're meant to be living. And so it's a, it's a pretty awesome tight knit community where I give you guys all the tools and opportunities and resources you might need to have the life that you really want to live. So if you want to find out more information about that, you can go ahead on over to sallyhope.com and click on the wild heart revolution 
links and please feel free to email me if you guys have any questions about that or anything we talked about today. I love connecting with people. So don't hesitate to reach out. Sallyhope.com. I just adore you. Thank you so much. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. I adore you too. And I look forward to hanging out with you more, my lady. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time on the podcast. I will see you all in cyberspace. Bye-bye.